This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I wanted to do a follow-up talking a little bit more about Bitcoin hardware wallets and the issues involved. This is a follow-up to yesterday's video in which I discussed the GoFetch attack, which is a vulnerability at the level of the chip, at the level, level of the silica itself for Macs that use the M1 and M2 chip. So I'd suggest watching this video before watching, uh, which I'll link to in the description notes below, watch yesterday's video before watching today's video. But I wanted to to highlight a number of responses and comments that I thought were interesting and that would benefit the general community. Colin Patrick Lindsay responding me with an Intel Mac, in other words, a Mac desktop or laptop with an Intel chip. My response, it's best for everyone, Windows, Mac, Linux users, at this point to assume that their computer is already compromised. And this is from the perspective of using it to store your private keys. You have to assume, it's the safest thing is to assume that there are problems with your hardware with your software, et cetera. And this is why it's very important to use a hardware wallet. I said you should assume that all chips may have government backdoors at this point. So you have hot wallets. These are wallets that are connected to the internet. They're on a mobile device. They're on a laptop or desktop. They've either connected to the internet in the past or currently connected or could connect. These hot wallets should only be used for small amounts like for example, $100 worth of Bitcoin on a mobile wallet on your phone. The best solution for larger amounts of Bitcoin, your lifetime savings would be putting them in cold storage, putting the keys on a hardware wallet, which never touches the internet and your keys are stored safely inside. The way it works is this, a hardware wallet is used to generate your recovery seed, which is sort of the master password or the master recovery uh, method for all of your Bitcoin transactions and all the addresses associated with it. This is generally represented as a 12 or 24 word uh, list that you need to memorize in a certain order and store and back up safely. You store this offline after generating it using the hardware wallet, and then you sign Bitcoin transactions with it when needed using the hardware wallet. So this is the basic function of Bitcoin hardware wallets. And the way my favorite setup works like this, you have your hardware wallet, most cases would be a cold card or a Blockstream Jade. I prefer Bitcoin only companies and Bitcoin only hardware wallets. You connect your hardware wallet either in an air gap fashion or through the USB port of your desktop or laptop. You connect that to the Sparrow wallet, which is free and open source software that you can download. I'll link to a video in a minute that talks about that. So you connect your hardware wallet to the Sparrow wallet and the Sparrow wallet provides sort of the interconnective tissue that allows your hardware wallet to interact either with your own node or a Sparrow suggested node. It's best to run your own Bitcoin node, but if you can't, there are some Sparrow suggested uh, nodes that you can connect to. And then Sparrow through through your node or through someone else's node will help, help you connect to the Bitcoin network. So it basically goes hardware wallet to Sparrow wallet to node to Bitcoin network. In this case, the Sparrow wallet is functioning a little bit like Trezor Suite if you've ever used that or Ledger Live, helping to connect your hardware wallet to the Bitcoin network. So this is a much better solution because you are using a hardware wallet made by one company, then you're using Sparrow, which is made by a different individual. And so they would have to collude, for example, to take your Bitcoin. Also in the case of Trezor Suite or Ledger Live, you're trusting the Trezor node or the Ledger node. These nodes are probably honest nodes at the moment, but that could of course always change in the future. And we're trying to move everyone to more self-sovereign solutions like the Sparrow cold card setup. It's important to emphasize that your Bitcoin private keys, as we said, never leave your hardware wallet. When you wanna send Bitcoin to someone else or to yourself, in other words, you wanna move the Bitcoin from one address Bitcoin address to another, you use Sparrow to build a transaction, to construct a transaction. That unsigned transaction is then sent by Sparrow into inside the hardware wallet, either through the USB port of your computer or in an air gap fashion using micro SD cards or QR codes or different ways of doing it. Your hardware wallet then signs the transaction, sends it back out, sends the signed transaction back out to Sparrow, does not send your private keys outside. Sparrow uses the connected node to broadcast your signed transaction to the Bitcoin network so that a Bitcoin miner can include it in a future block. It's very important to always confirm your transactions, both the amounts, the transaction fee amounts, the addresses, etc. You want to always confirm these on the screen of the hardware wallet itself. And in this way, theoretically, your Bitcoin and its private keys would be safe even if you're using a malware infected computer. Obviously, you want to take good precautions with your computer so it's not full of malware and spyware. It's best not to use a Windows machine for this reason. It's much better to use Apple 
or Linux in spite of the go fetch attack possibility, which is only really possible if someone has physical control of your Mac. Other best practice is to have a dedicated machine that you use just for your Bitcoin transactions. It's really a question of how far you want to take this and how much of your life savings you have stored in Bitcoin. If I use a cold card with Sparrow Wallet on an M1 Mac, my keys are not on my machine, right? And I said, yes, that is correct. Your private keys never leave the cold card. I'll link to these two videos in the description notes below. This talks about the Sparrow Wallet, how to set it up. This talks about how to link your Jade, your Blockstream Jade hardware wallet, or by extension, your cold card hardware wallet, how to link it to Sparrow, and then make a transaction that sends your Bitcoin off of your ledger or a ledger controlled address to a Jade and Sparrow controlled address. So I'll link to both those in the description notes below. If you want more hand holding, this is something that I go into a lot of depth in my paid course as well. But you don't need to buy the paid course. You can probably extract everything you need from those two free videos. Why trust Sparrow is a question. Code is open source and viewable, so you don't need to trust them. Even if you cannot read code, there are lots of eyeballs on the code. And in many cases, you're still much better off, for example, using a Trezor hardware wallet plus the Trezor software in terms of Trezor Suite plus the Trezor node. In this case, you have cold card, you have Sparrow, and you have someone else's node. And I think that's a much more robust solution. Thanks for the excellent info. Which hardware wallet would you recommend for altcoins? My response, that, that's like asking what kind of container would you use to store your dog crap and keep it separate from your horse crap and your cat crap? Much better not to own crap, but Patu Arone doesn't give up. What would be the best container to store crap in your opinion? And I said, convert it to BTC and store it on a cold card hardware wallet. If you're interested in helping to support this channel, it's very, very helpful if you subscribe, if you like, if you leave a comment and share this video with a friend, especially subscribing really helps out. You can also leave a question or topic for a future video. Question from Beach Volleyball Coach. I have Bitcoin on a Trezor. My question is, can I just trash or smash my Trezor and then just, and then just enter my recovery seed onto a new Jade and go for, from there? Is that feasible? My response, if you believe that your Trezor has been compromised, then using the same seed, the same recovery seed, the 12 or 24 word seed on a different hardware wallet doesn't accomplish anything. If you get a new Jade or a new cold card, generate a fresh new recovery seed. And then the question, so you have to send it over the network to a new wallet. Yes, this is correct. And this is what I, what I talk about in that video, how to move your Bitcoin private keys off of Ledger onto a Jade. Next question, what about some hacker intercepting the delivery of the hardware wallet, built a backdoor in it, and then it gets to us. This hardware wallet will seem safe, but it's compromised. This is what's also called a man in the middle attack and good hardware wallet companies like Blockstream Jade and Cold Card go to great lengths to provide evidence of tampering, etc. For example, with the cold card, you can go to their website and see the various things they do with their hardware and their firmware and their packaging to make sure that you can guard against men in the middle attacks. Uh, Johanan658, this guy must be a shell for big Bitcoin only hardware wallet. Yes, I recommend the wallets that I use myself. I'm not paid or compensated by any company or sponsor in any way. The reason I use well-known and talk about well-known Bitcoin hardware wallets is you don't want to use something that's really obscure that no one has heard of. You want projects that are generally well accepted and that most importantly have lots and lots of eyeballs on them, looking at the firmware, looking at everything that they do. And this is much safer than using some no-name hardware wallet. I'm not POTUS writes, you coiners really think that 8 billion people are going to use Bitcoin in all caps when you have to post videos like this. My response, Amazon is going to fail as a company because they only sell books, which is a very low margin competitive business. The internet is slow and you need an expert team of 30 and $5 million to create a simple website and videos on the internet will never be possible due to low bandwidth and myriad technical difficulties. I like what Mr. Rem 7600 said here, uh, then don't use it, just keep using fiat. We don't care. But again, you have to skate to where the puck is going to be. The tools will get much better and easier to use to interact with the Bitcoin network. This is the same thing that has happened with the internet over the past 20 years. Lots of people posting comments, especially it seems like it's the longest and the smartest comments that YouTube has been deleting. This has been a problem for years. I've done everything I can to try to prevent it, but I'm often accused of deleting comments that are somehow threatening. I never do this unless they are direct comments that are shelling uh, ship coins either, or that are threatening violence against me and my family 
or that are attacking some group. These are the only times that I delete comments. I'm not afraid of real criticism, so please don't take it personally. If you type up a long comment and YouTube makes it disappear, you should maybe make a copy before you submit it so it doesn't disappear. This is a real problem, but I just wanted to let you know that I am not doing censoring of this short of this sort unless you're you're shelling a, a ship coin or doing something really horrendous. A response on Twitter: It feels not like not mentioning Foundation Passport is a purposeful choice. Bitbox offers altcoins, so I see why you don't include them, but Passport is air-gapped, Bitcoin only, made in USA. Any reason you don't include that in your various lists? I should probably include them more often. The two reasons I tend not to is Cold Card is already quite expensive wallet for many people, and the Passport is even more expensive. It's $199. It's a cool device. I have experimented with it, and it's a little bit like an old-school cell phone. I, I think it's nice. Uh, the bigger screen is nice, especially for middle age or older age eyes. Uh, but I think the, the form factor and it's a little bit bulkier than a cold card. It's still uh, a really good device and very thoughtfully put together. The company does have some connections with Monero and that also makes me uh, a little bit hesitant. They are a Bitcoin only company, so I, I suspect um, I probably should be uh, talking about them a bit more, but it's really that combination of things, the price tag when you can get just as much or more with the cold card and uh, as well as the, the Monero connections, which I don't really want people to be driven into. Nevertheless, if you wanna buy a passport, uh, it's definitely a solid product and uh, it feels the phone itself, the hardware wallet feels, feels very solid. Um, I find it easier in my messages to have very simple messages like buy a jade and a cold card. If the list gets too long, then people stop paying attention. But this is definitely a legitimate choice. And I wish the foundation uh, company uh, company well. This is a cold card MK4, which is, you know, it's $30 cheaper or whatever. I should also mention more frequently the Seed Signer project, which is a do-it-yourself hardware wallet project where you can actually build one of these yourself and then flash them with the software provided by Seed Signer. This is something you can go to their website here. You can buy all the pieces yourself, uh, just buy them online. And these are pieces uh, These are pieces of hardware that are not necessarily associated with Bitcoin hardware wallets. And so no one can really stop anyone from building a Seed Signer wallet. So definitely go check that out. I also have an in-depth tutorial in my paid course, how to do it. Again, you don't need to buy the paid course unless you want a little bit more handholding. You can go through this website and they offer everything you need to know to, in order to do it. I think if you click here on hardware, it'll show you what to order and uh, then there's some instructions. So this is built using, obviously built on top of a Raspberry Pi. So another good project to check out, Blockstream Jade, Cold Card, Foundation Passport Device and Seed Signer are all really good choices. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.